been a different kind of U.S. Open compared to what we're used to. It's been challenging in many respects, but it has been a U.S. Open nonetheless. And given the very real prospect several months ago that tennis wouldn't come back at all this year, this U.S. Open has shown what's possible. With that, we're pleased to welcome the USTA CEO and Executive Director Mike Douse to Tennis Channel Live. Mike, great to chat with you. And I'm just curious if you could say, given how fluid things have been with this pandemic over the last several months, how close did this U.S. Open come to not happening? Well, Brett, thanks for having me. And I would say several times we, we thought it may not happen. Uh, we started this process back in mid-March, ran many different scenarios and always held it to three principles. You know, can we do it safely? Is it good for tennis? And does it financially make sense? And through that uh, process, at the end of it, in June 16th, I think you remember I was on your show and we were able to check those boxes and we we're continuing to check those boxes all the way until the start of the Western and Southern. Mike, non-COVID, but let's talk about what everyone's talking about uh, today. How did you experience the Novak Djokovic default? I was actually sitting in uh, Danny Zausner's office, uh, who oversees our facilities here. We were having a business discussion. I looked up on the, his TV screen. Unfortunately, I saw our, our lines person down, and we quickly turned on the volume and, and watched it in real time at that point. What, what do you think? What, what struck you? Well, it was really unfortunate. Our first concern was the health of our lines judge. Uh, Dr. Daniels was out treating her, so I, I noticed that right away, which was important. Uh, once we understood she was healthy and okay, uh, our chief, uh, our referee, Zorn, was out there, obviously uh, consulting with the chair umpire and the Grand Slam supervisor who was watching the match. And at that point, it became very clear. It was, it was black and white. Unfortunately, Novik uh, had violated the rules of the Grand Slam book. And, and with that, it, it was a decision quickly made after uh, you know, hearing uh, Novak's point of view. Uh, Zorn made the decision. And as the USTA, we supported him 100%. A lot of other events, not just in tennis, but in sports, are paying really close attention to the execution of this U.S. Open. What, what would you tell them halfway through the tournament? What are some of the best practices you've picked up that you'd pass on to other sports trying to reset? Yeah, great question. And I would say collaboration and communication. There's so many stakeholders involved, whether it's government entities. Uh, in the tennis uh, case, it's the WTA, ATP, uh, as well as our colleagues over in Europe getting the athletes in and out or other parts of the country for that matter. So it's just been over communication. We've had daily calls literally again since mid-March to discuss how is the best way to pull off this tournament. A, a lot of positives, a bit of controversy. We've been speaking about the, the Benoit pair 11 and, and the second hotel. If you could play a let, if you have, have any regrets or could do anything over, what would that be? Yeah, another good question. I think hindsight is uh, always 2020, but uh, the decisions we made with the information we had at the time, uh, I don't think we would have changed anything. It is very, very fluid, uh, and we're learning as we go. We, as anyone in this situation has never dealt with a pandemic, so I'm really proud with how our team has, has executed. And at the end of the day, you know, we take, uh, we're, we're very appreciative of the great tennis that's going on, and uh, I'm excited for the matches today as well. Yeah, keep, keep going with that. I mean, we keep hearing that, People and institutions reveal themselves in times of crisis. What have you learned about tennis? What have you learned about tennis players this summer? I think grateful is, is the best word I take away from this. Uh, walking through our, our hotel, as you mentioned, the sense of community and appreciation by everyone has been fantastic. On the very first day of the Western and Southern, which uh, was been nearly a month ago, just to see everyone's faces again, everyone coming on site, knowing this, all the hard work and uh, sacrifices everyone uh, from the player side, from the staff side, uh, have taken to make this happen. It was really a powerful moment to see everyone in the hotel getting back together after our tour was stopped in uh, early March. We're joined on TC Live by Mike Douse, the USTA CEO and executive director. Uh, with no tickets to sell this year, no luxury suites to sell, the U.S. Open is not generating nearly the revenue that it normally does, and yet you have been able to maintain prize money for the players at, I think, 95 percent of last year's levels. Uh, well, why was that a priority for you, and uh, how are you doing that? Yeah, so we thought it was very important uh, if we're going to hold this tennis is, or this tournament. Is it in the best interest of tennis? And to be in the best interest of tennis, we needed the best players in the world here competing. We're very fortunate, and we've been transparent on this, that our, our net operating income is going to be down nearly 80 percent. But we're fortunate in the fact that we've had great reserves and we're able to cover it for this year. It's, it's not an ongoing model, 
But for this year, we are able to do it. Again, we thought it was in the best interest of tennis to get our sport going again. And we are seeing bright signs. As the people are coming out of the pandemic, we're seeing sales of entry-level tennis rackets have nearly doubled in the last 90 days. Uh, recent market research that shows nearly 10% of the uh, U.S. population has played tennis again in spring 2020 versus 6% in, in 2019. So we do see tennis participation coming up, and we knew the U.S. Open could help drive that excitement and enthusiasm. So we, we thought it was worth it to, to go forward with it. With six days left, what's going to be the barometer of success? I mean, the, the U.S. Open 2020 will be a success if what? What are you looking for this next week? What all goes back to as long as we can keep everyone healthy and safety uh, safe. You know, we've had over 10,000 tests so far. And as you know, we've had one positive test with a player. And that's our number one priority is to continue to keep everyone healthy and safe. And number two is just to continue to have great matches. Yesterday, I mean, we had some challenges, obviously, with Novak's default. But I look back at some of the matches, Jennifer Brady, Shelby Rogers, the match late last night, just great tennis. And I'm looking forward to the matches today. Now, we're, we're all very grateful that tennis is back. Thanks for helping make it happen. Uh, good luck the rest of the way. Stay healthy, and uh, we'll see you next year in New York. Thanks, Brett. Thank, thank you, John. Mike Dow, CEO, Executive Director of the USTA. Quick break for us.